Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally broke the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold, and so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. The stakes are as high as they can get. It's me. I'm here now. 
ready to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. Just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit. Now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I lost him in the scuffle, but the real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. Talk soon. A disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and intends on blackmailing her. Disguised as one of the racing mascots, he plans to meet Sierra by the old motel. Well, I always did feel that pink was your colour, 47. Hey, hey, can you do me a favour? Go check if my keys are over there. The guy's crazy and I don't dare go over there before he did you see him? The guy that jumped me and grabbed my outfit? Hey, yo! Did you find some keys over there? Oh man, you're a real lifesaver. Thank you! The race is entering its final lap, 47. The race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now. That is one more victory for the Chinese race team. Robert Knox is not going to like it, and it will be interesting to hear what he has to say after the podium. Hi there. The ticket. VIP. This is the real deal. No fortune. Nice outfit. Really brings out your eyes. Miss Knox informed me you'd be here. She asked to make sure you brought the documents. So, did you bring the documents? I have the papers right here. Excellent. Come on in. 
Have a seat or something. I'll let Miss Knox know you're here. So far, so good, 47. Now, let's see where this meeting is headed. So, uh, you here for a job application or what? Something like that. Nice. If you don't mind me saying so, your particular choice of attire is maybe a little, I don't know, off? For a job interview, I mean. My suit is at the cleaners. And you couldn't find anything else to wear? Correct. You must lead a very interesting life, my friend. You have no idea. Hey, Flamingo guy. There's not to run away. Have a seat somewhere. She'll be here as soon as she can. So, Mr. Hmm. I never did catch your name. Names are for friends. Very well. Straight to the point in all business. Walk with me. Where are we going? Hi. Ori, what am I gonna do? Kill you in broad daylight. I just want a bit of privacy here. Not about to do sensitive business like this in front of an audience. Good idea. So just to get this straight. You claimed in your email to have somehow found internal reports that show Kronstadt's involvement in the Tungan Valley Massacre. Sounds about right. Let's be clear. You and I are having this meeting because my father doesn't need to know about this. It's just another undesired distraction. I don't care if the information is true or false. I don't care if it mentions moving money from the Nexus Project into Tungan Valley Damage Control, uh, as you claimed mascot. in your correspondence. It ain't just a profession. I do it's care about lifestyle. protecting my father, which is why you and I are now here. I see. Leave me alone for a few minutes, guys. Sure thing, Miss Knox. Uh, if you need us, just call. We're right around the corner. So here's the deal. You hand over the documents and leave, and that's the end of it. And you will do that now. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One, you will leave this place. Huh? Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. You know, Flamingo's kind of the flyer in Miami. Empty charm. With 
flawless technological execution. That thing's beyond fixing. tech reporter, but I have ambitions too, you know. The fact is that Kronstadt is very likely withholding information on what actually happened in Kronstadt Bayside Center. The Kronstadt exhibition is on. I hope you enjoy your visit. Don't know. This is my first gig. Never been to any of these races before, but it sure is loud. I heard something about a secret demo upstairs in the expo building, but it's all in the Yeah, I love it. It's a I understood from the briefing earlier that we're just supposed to grab him if something happens to it. No poking around the engine or anything like that. Yeah, Knox is a genuine technical genius. Eagerly protected by our projects. He prefers to fix everything himself. It's Don't worry about grabbing him. Because if anything goes awry, you'll see him down here as fast as lightning. Gotcha. Robert Knox has a race car on display in the Expo building. The show staff is under strict instructions to summon him at any sign of malfunction. Apparently, Knox trusts no one to fix his car but him. Hmm. Perhaps it's time to poke around under the hood, 47. They do say one should never mess with another man's wheels.
Good. I dare say this should get Nox's undivided attention. will roll. I need you to get in the car. Don't touch anything until I tell you. It shouldn't behave like this at all. Try the engine, Smith. should work. Ah, here we are. Just a loose wire back there. Let me just reattach it. Good. Hit it, Smith. Right, that's it. Smith, if you see anyone, and I mean anyone, messing with the car, you call me. You hear me? Nice. 
scale field test of Pallas in a few months. That sounds like one of those entirely unfounded rumors that gets you. Okay, McKinnis, let's run this test. You're sure you fixed all outstanding issues with the micro actuators? Yeah, boss, I'm sure. Just an hour ago. All legs are green. And this fella will make your special place all tingly. Hmm, hang on, 47. Robert Knox's calendar shows a meeting with a Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the U.S. military. It must be related to that robot. Maybe you can find Mendez somewhere. I've looked over everything and I... Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the U.S. military, is scheduled for a private demonstration of a new Kronstadt robotics project. Sounds like a way to get up close and personal with Robert Knox, 47. Just can't nail it. Something about the console, but I'm not sure what. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. Desperately lacking any discipline and respect for other people. Last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up right here. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Hey, there? Yes! Mm. 
Mr. Mend. What's up? Oh, hi. Mr. Mendez? Right this way, sir. See you. Guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. Ah, hi there. It's dirty. It's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this. Android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there, android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, don't get me. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan And it, just like I showed you, it's perfectly safe. Go ahead. Target acquired. Okay. Don't be A. Well, how's that for impressive? Amazing, I know. I just think how much more we can accomplish together. My brains, your money. The sky's the limit here, my friend. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I still prefer the human touch. You're part of an old institution and you prefer the traditional approach. I respect that. But like it or not, this is the future you're looking at. Autonomous synthetic systems will entirely remove human agents from direct engagement. I guarantee this thing will absolutely murder anything you put it up against. Sounds promising. So, Mr. Mendez, impressive so far, yeah? Let me quickly show you our on-site robotics lab. It's small, but state-of-the-art, and it's fully mobile, so you can deploy it anywhere. Hey, good to see you, man. So, as part of the deal, Kronstadt will throw in one deployment cell per five units. Outfitted to enable on-site adjustments and calibrations, it'll be shipped in a bulletproof shell and can be dropped anywhere on the planet using the Kronstadt T-37 deployment drones. So if you have any questions or want to see anything again, just let me or McKinnis know. I'll let you hang out and look at everything for yourself. Hey, don't be a stranger, Ted. Shortly after the break, I am Pam Kingsley, GNN News.
Still some of my finest work. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. You ever play any sports in your life? Great day, Doctor.
Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. <laughs> 